In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a Y2K inspired Chrome typography logo on Blender. And I'm also going to be using Adobe Illustrator. So if you want to learn how to make this, just stay tuned. So before we even start on Illustrator, I want to look for some inspiration for my logo. Um, since we are going for a specific aesthetic, I usually go on Pinterest and I type in Y2K logo and a whole bunch of them should pop up. From here, I'll just copy and paste a couple of these photos um, to my Illustrator artboard, and then we can take a closer look at them and try to find similar aspects of all logos that kind of make it look Y2K, if that makes sense. So now that we're back on Illustrator, uh, we can start working on the logo. So a lot, a lot of the similarities I noticed in Y2K logos were that the fonts are very blocky um so i would i'm going to type in my text which is y2k and i'm going to find a blocky logo that gives me the same kind of feel for this tutorial i'm going to be using a free font called accelerate which i found on behance.com and that font is available for free download i'm going to link it down in the bio and the next thing that I noticed about Y2K logos is that they have a lot of round shapes either behind or in front of the text. So I'm creating this oval-like shape in Adobe Illustrator by just using the shape tool, creating an oval and copying and pasting that. And I just made one of them white so that it's you can see it better. But after that, I just create the shape with my um, selection tool and I merge the two shapes together. And then I put it behind the logo and kind of twist it a little bit. And you just want to play around with this until you get the look that you want. I kind of extend it a little bit, as you can see here. And the final similarity I noticed on all these Y2K logos is that they usually have some type of shape that makes it pop. It could be stars. Um, it could be like the four corner twinkles. Um, it could be like an axe drop shake, shape. Uh, for this, um, I'm just going to create a shape using the circle tool and then going to fx distort and transform and then pucker and bloat and i'm going to copy and paste that to create just one shape and then once again i'm going to merge these two shapes first i have to expand their appearance so i highlight all of them and go to object expand appearance and then i merge it as you can see on the side and I like what the shape is doing so far. So I'm just going to copy and paste that and just make it a little bit smaller and add it to the side. So now that I'm happy with the final design, I'm just gonna make sure everything is editable in Blender. So I have, I'll have to um, select the text and right click create outline and everything is everything else is pretty much good. And I'm just gonna export this I go on a file export as and making sure that it's an SVG. Now we're just going to open up Blender and import our file by going to file import SVG and it should pop up on our screen. Then I, it sh it's probably going to be small so I just highlight everything and press S on my keyboard to scale it up. And with our text selected, I'm just going to set the origin to geometry, which it basically just, um, you know, that X, Y, Z axis thingy. So it just sets it to the, the middle of the object. So yeah, hopefully that made sense. And very quickly, I'm just going to join the letters together to make it one object. So I select all the letters and then right click my mouse and select join. And I also forgot to tell you guys how to rotate it. So basically just highlight the whole thing 
and press RX 90 on your keyboard and it should rotate 90 degrees. And now I'm adding extrusion. So I go to the object properties panel and I go to geometry and extrude all of the objects. Um, I want mine to be thick, but feel free to do whatever you want with yours. And now I'm just like repositioning everything to where I think it looked better. So what I did notice about a lot of these Y2K logos is they usually have like a thick border behind them. So that's what I'm going to create for this logo. So I'm just going to select the text and copy and paste that. And then with my secondary text selected, I'm going to go to the object properties panel. And then I'm going to go all the way to up top to fill and press done and then go to the bottom to depth and add um depth to it and then that should make it like thick and big enough to where it would look like a an outline and you just want to play around with the number I want it to be like super noticeable so I made it like really thick and if you notice here you see those like vertices that are going out of place this might not happen depending on your text this does happen to me often and there is a way to fix this so so now that we've done that, I'm just going to remove the material of the outline very quickly at, all the way at the bottom of the material properties tab, uh, just so you guys can see it better. And then I'm going to want to edit my text a little bit more. So I want to like finesse it. So how I do that is by selecting the text and converting it to a mesh. And then I go to the modify properties tab and I remesh it and I'm choosing voxel and I'm going with 0 0.007 and again this number is like depending on your text and the size of your SVG and then I'm going to apply that and that is now ready to be able to I'm um, now that's ready to sculpt so I go to sculpt mode and then I select the inflation tool and then I can adjust the radius and the strength and I just go over it and like puff the letters out and you don't really want to worry too much about it being an even because in the next step we can um, fix that up a little bit Okay, so now we're going to smooth everything out. So we're just going to select the smooth tool um, and then just go over that. And I'm also going to go back and forth with the between the smooth tool, the inflation tool and the bulb tool um, until I like how it looks. And then I'm going to go back to object mode. After that, I'm going to fix the vertices that went out of place in the outline. So I select the outline and then I right click my mouse and convert it to mesh. And then I go to edit mode. And from there, you'll be able to see the vertices. I click on that little box on the top. It just makes everything 
trans like see through so i'll be able to select all the vertices throughout and i just select it right press x on my mouse and then delete vertices oh sorry x on my keyboard you know what i mean but yeah and then i do that till i'm happy with it and i go back to object mode while back in object mode you'll notice it's a little bit see through so I just unselect that box and I'm gonna go ahead and convert every other object to a mesh and remesh it just like I did with the text and puff it out and smooth it out so basically I'll repeat the process I did with the text with every other object in my logo And if anybody knows any free copyright music I can use to not wither in silence while I'm fixing, let me know in the comments. Oh yeah, and if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what type of videos you guys want to see. I'm trying to make a video a week, but I need ideas. And also, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be sure to answer them. Okay, so now we're going to move on to adding materials. So I'm just going to hover my mouse in between those two and slide it over and then turn this tab into a shade editor tab. And then um, select my text and remove the existing material. And then just add a new one. For this, I'm kind of going for like a blues clues nickelodeon y2k type of vibe or at least that's what came to my head when i was making this and what like felt the most y2k to me and i was born in 1998 so i lived through this kind of and if it's your text is pixelated, just right click on your text and select auto smooth and it'll just smooth it out. And after this point, I'm just playing around with the colors like you could make it metallic and look pretty cool. But I'm just going to play around with a few colors and see what I like the best. And just make sure to remove the material, existing material for every other object and just play around with the colors for that too. Feel free to make it your own. I'm not going to go too crazy with the materials. I'm just keep it simple. Um, just in order to get that plasticky, shiny material, you just kind of have to put the specular all the way up and then the roughness all the way down. And if you want to make it metallic, just bring the metallic to one or all the way up as well. Now that I've finalized the color palette, I'm going to add an environment texture. Uh, so basically like in the render properties, it'll look grayed out or purple. And um, we wanna fix that because that'll that's how it's gonna look when it's rendered. So we're gonna go to the shade editor and object. We're just gonna switch it to world. And these two nodes should be there. And then we're going to go to add a texture environment texture and then just connect the color to color. And that should make it purple. And then I'm going to use an HDRI. So you can just go to like Polyhaven or any type of HDRI 
library and just download it for free. And depending on the type of HDRI you choose, your materials will look completely different. As you can see, I'm just going to try a few different ones here until I find the one that I feel like is the best for what I'm for the look that I'm going for. And I will be linking polyhaven.com in the description box because that's where I get most of my HDRIs. And now that I've decided on one, um, I'm just going to add a background to this. I actually added a plane. I forgot to tell you guys. So at the top where it says add, you can just add mesh plane. And then I added a material just like I did to the other objects. And I'm also going to adjust the camera. So just click on the little camera icon, press N on your keyboard and click camera to view. So now I can move it around with my mouse and adjust the camera. And I'm showing you there. If the camera's not there. You can just go to add camera. And then I adjust it to the view that I want. I wanted to add more detail to my text. Just a little extra something something. So I'm going to use a little star thingy majingy and add, make them smaller. So I'll just copy and paste it and then make it smaller. And add it on top of my text. And then I'm going to change it into a metallic color by just bringing the metallic all the way up and then turning the color to white and I'm just gonna sporadically add those to the text text as I see fit lastly I'm just gonna adjust the background uh, the simple color wasn't doing it for me I'm gonna add some like type of color you'll see so first I'm just gonna shift a on my keyboard and then press the search button and add a Veroni old texture and then I'm going to add a mixed RGB node and also a color ramp node and I'm just going to connect the mixed RGB to the color um, the distance to the fact and you'll see in a minute that I'll add a color ramp Okay, so my design is finalized and I'm ready to render. I like to render in the Cycles engine, which is the photorealistic engine. So I'll just go, out, go ahead and switch over to that. And if you have a GPU, just switch to that as well. It'll make everything faster. And then at the very top, I'm going to click Render, Render Image. And that is basically it for this tutorial. Uh, I'm just going to switch to the noisy image because I like the noise. And I'm going to save this by going to image, save as. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, you're a real one. Just make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments thank you for supporting me and i'll see you on the next one